Are we ready, Ali? Good evening, everyone. Chair would like to call to order the regular monthly meeting of the Board of Trustees of the Village of Lake Barrington. It is Tuesday, July 9th, 2019. It is 7.02, and I'll ask the clerk to please call the phone. Trustee Berg. Trustee Mitchell. Trustee Perkins. Here. Trustee Rigby. Here. Trustee Schaller. Here. Trustee Thompson. Here. President Richardson. Here. Would you all rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We just celebrated the 4th. It's great fun. My wife and the girls and I were in London. Great, great fun to celebrate Independence Day with the Brits. They got quite a, they got quite a sense of humor. They say, we actually call it Thanksgiving. Right? <laughs> uh, there was a YouTube clip on this Independence Day. Any of us who are of a certain generation will and it's worth it, and I'll be happy to send you the links. Uh, in 1985, the Variety Clubs, uh, which is a movie star, you know, a charity in Hollywood for years and years and years, did an annual dinner honoring somebody, and they honored Reagan in 1985. And Steve Lawrence and Edie Gourmet well, did a melody of combined American patriotic songs. And uh, when you're feeling down and you need a little lift, that is just the best possible time there is. It's, I might even show it here one night. <laughs> you know, and those were the two couples that kind of uh, epitomized, epitomized the devotion to one another, Steve and Edie, and Ronnie and the Nancy. So uh, we can move to agenda item, but we get to do something really pleasant here, uh, which is to administer the oath of office to officials. And we have two to administer tonight. Uh, one is an oath of office for our, our colleague and friend, Jim Thompson. And I see he brought his niece with him. <laughs> uh, and then uh, our friend and colleague, Susie Perkins, as well. Uh, Karen or uh, Jim, are there any particular setups that we need to do here? Uh, no, I think we're going to meet at the podium. Great. 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 Did you want to do Trustee Thompson? I thought. Okay. Lisa, are you going to take pictures? Good. Good, good, good. And Jim, it would be entirely appropriate if you wish to come up and stand next to your husband as he does this. Okay, what a pleasure. Uh, would you repeat after me, please? And which raise your right hand. Uh, and uh, I, I state your name, Jim Thompson, ha having been elected, having been elected to the office of village trustee, to the office of village trustee in the village of Lake Barrington, in the village of Lake Barrington, in the county of Lake Aforsett, county of Lake Aforsett, Aforsett, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution, that I will support the Constitution of the United States, of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And that I will faithfully discharge. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the office. The duties of the office. A village trustee. A village trustee. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Susie, um, if you just repeat after me, but state your name. She needs to raise her right hand. If, if you raise your right hand. I. I, Susie Perkins. Having been appointed to the office. Having been appointed to the office. A village trustee. A village trustee. In the village of Lake Barrington. In the village of Lake Barrington. In the county of Lake Aforsett. In the county of Lake Aforsett. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution. Of the United States. Of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And that I will faithfully discharge. And that I will faithfully discharge. The duties of the office. The duties of the office. 
charge. The duties of the office. The duties of the office. A village trustee. A village trustee. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. Congratulations. That's a hand. Agenda item five this evening is the approval of the minutes from our meetings last month. Five A is a approval of the minutes from the special committee of the whole held on June 5 and 5b is minutes of the full board of trustees meeting also held that same day uh, are there questions on the minutes or proposed edits or corrections or whatever? there being none chair would like a motion to approve and block agenda items 5a and 5b minutes of the special committee of the whole and minutes of the full board of trustees June 5 2019 may I have a motion please my trustee Shallow, may I please have a second? Second. My trustee Rigby, thank you, both gentlemen. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, chair will leave the record open for a period of five business days for any technical or conforming amendments to the minutes without objection. So ordered. Agenda item six is President's remarks. Uh, I thought in Andy Burke's absence uh, that I invite Kathleen Scott to come up and, and give a report on some of the economic development activities. Uh, and that way you don't have to stick around until later in the agenda when those committee reports come up. So, uh, Kathleen, you. welcome. Thank it's you. good to see you. And Andy sent some cards. He's out in Yellowstone. Mm -hmm. I said if he wanted to see hot air under pressure, he could just come to this meeting. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm Kathleen Scott, Scott Partners. And even though it's not time for our update, um, economic development has made a lot of progress in the last six weeks, and we have some interesting news to share. Uh, just an update on what we've been up to. And, um, well, we successfully launched our 2019 business visits. Um, we're calling it Tour 2019, and we're going to meet with each and every business in the village in a timely manner. And um, Village Administrator Karen Dalton Lang and I had the opportunity to meet with um, Jill at Mower Works, Phil at KC Printing, Bill at Joseph D. Foreman and & Company, and we were scheduled to meet with Tom at the Graphics Art Studio Thursday, this week. And um, the, the, it was wonderful because no one had any complaints. There were a couple of questions, and um, uh, Karen was able to give them good answers regarding SSAs expiring and things like that. And um, everyone seems pretty content and happy and glad to be uh, a member of the business community of the village. So I was really happy to see that. On June 26th, um, Village Administrator Karen Dalton Lang and I attended the BizNow Chicago Hospitality Summit. And it's um, it was a really enlightening, interesting, Event. It's, uh, it was on hospitality, which is basically focused on the hotel industry in Chicago and the Chicago suburbs. And it was a, a coming together of, of all of the, the big players. And it was interesting to, to watch them interact, to interview them a little, to learn more of what we need to know here. And um, so we, we learned a lot more about the development process, which isn't quite as scary as we thought, but it's still, it's still going to take a lot of time and energy and effort. But at least we weren't discouraged, and that's a good thing. Um, in fact, uh, just this past Monday, July 8th, um, Village Administrator Karen Dalton Lang was contacted by one of the hotel developers that we had spoken with at length um, at the summit. And so um, it would probably be best for um, Karen to share the details of the discussion, first person here. Sure. First, I want to correct. We're not going to visit each and every business, because that's over 300, I think, of them, or 200. <coughs> but maybe the top people, 20 <laughs> or so. <laughs> but uh, Kathleen's right. It, it's kicked off to a very good start. Um, the businesses have opened their doors to us, have sat down and chatted. Um, they weren't in a hurry to shoe us off. We got to meet their dogs. Um, it was all good. <laughs> if, you were, if you were wearing field clothes, it was good. <laughs> so um, on that note, um, yeah, Kathleen and I spent a lot of time at the BizNow Chicago Summit going up and talking to people. And, and uh, we happened across a hotel developer and an architect, and we probably spent 20 minutes picking their brain and talking to them. 
Um, and he followed up with a phone call um, uh, on Monday. He invited us to go to a grand opening of a, a hotel he just developed and finished in Bridgeview. Bridge, Bridgeview. Bridgeview. Um, unfortunately, it's the same night as our uh, inaugural concert. <laughs> so I said, well, we can't make that. So we invited um, Kathleen and I, and when uh, Trustee Burke is back in town to come down and he will give us a tour of it. Um, we chatted a little bit about you know what it takes for development and you know he's a good developer. He wants everything in the world that he can get, and I recognize that. I used to be a developer, but you know you can kind of sort through like what they need and what they don't need. So um, like Kathleen said, we got a lot of good information at this BizNow Chicago Hospitality Summit. Uh, a little bit more understanding. They they also talked a lot about the the um, economy right now and how that affects. Um, hotel development and also how leadership of the different towns affect hotel development. So this was all, you know, I think good news for us. So I think so. Yeah. So sorry, back to you. We were encouraged, which yeah. is a good thing. Yeah. Um, and our, uh, moving forward, uh, we will continue to meet with the businesses. One of us wants to get to all of them eventually. <laughs> <laughs> um, as long as we don't get any complaints, I think we'll be fine. Yeah, right? exactly. Um, so uh, we're going to continue meeting with them. Um, we're, we're trying to, to, to schedule it when it's not very intrusive for the businesses. So we're sort of picking midweek, mid morning, mid afternoon, and, and, and they I think they recognize that we're trying to accommodate them while you know stopping in and, and making the introductions so that they can get to know people that they can contact in the village, and we get to know the people that are running businesses in the village. Um, we will also be scheduling as. Yes, yes, Karen mentioned the, the meeting with the hotel developer when Trustee Burke is available to learn more about how we might be able to um, find out more about the, the, the survey and the study and what we already have and how it might be applicable to what we would need. So um, it's all, all good so far, and I'm really happy to be able to provide that sort of update. Any questions? Yeah, in the visits that you and Karen have made, uh, there's a couple of scenarios that are always possible, uh, and I'm glad to. Uh, I'm glad for some of the detail you provided. Either you learned something new that you didn't know uh, that was a positive or a negative, or you had something reaffirmed, uh, which was a prior belief that was simply validated for better or for worse. Any uh, any highlights of the? Uh, this is an old. Uh, remember the commercial I should have had a V8 uh, kind of moment. Was there anything that? Stuck out to you. Um, well, the, the dogs were interested in this little thing because we left there smelling like wet lavender, and, and it was an early morning meeting. So, <laughs> yes. yeah, one of the, the businesses that keeps their dogs there and they go out to Pepper Lake every day and swim their dogs there. <laughs> Very easy wearing dogs. We got um, there and they were done. Yeah, I think one of the nice feedback we got from one of the owners was they said they really appreciated when the business, when the village put in the uh, walking path out there, um, that they very much like that and their staff like that to walk down to Pepper Park Coffee or just walk for exercise during their noon time. Um, and um, other businesses have been there for a long time and they appreciated, you know, the, the village's support when we use local businesses and when we direct people there. Um, like Kathleen said, one had a question about the SSA and was happy to hear it's expiring next year. <laughs> um, and um, uh, about that sort of thing. So they were, like so far they've been all really nice. That's <laughs> great. We've had uh, some of them appear here during the public comment mm -hmm. session just to uh, give a little bit of background on what they do to help it. I would certainly welcome your recommendations on others to invite in for a similar thing. Not quite an infomercial, but simply just a here's what we here's who we are, here's what we do. And, we did encourage the um, the business owners to to come and partake of a meeting and and you know watch watch their elected officials in action and um, you know and then and, um, Karen did mention that you know they could introduce themselves and, and you know, during the meeting you know next to the business they're with and everything and, yeah and I recently extended that to all American Reclaim I went down to visit them a couple of weeks or last week I think it was just to see how their moving in process was was going. And it's a, it's a big job to move from their Crystal Lake facility to their new Lake Barrington facility. And um, they said as soon as they get set up and ready to go, they're ready to join the chamber and, you know, the whole ribbon cutting and um, uh, come and introduce themselves officially to the village. So. All 
Are there questions for Kathleen or comments? Wonderful. I appreciate your help, Kathleen. Thank you very, very much for your dedication. Agenda item seven is the first opportunity in the agenda for the public to address the board on non-agenda items. Uh, is there anyone wishing to just yeah, come on up, please? Welcome. And for the record, if you'll please introduce yourself and your address. Absolutely. Uh, my name is Sean Kenny. I'm in the Horseshoe Grill. It's at uh, 26868 West Northwest Highway. So I'm right up by Moral Works, where Kathleen was talking about before. Uh, I've been there for uh, for four years, actually. Uh, I've been about four years. And uh, what's today's day? The ninth. Tomorrow. Four years. Um, so I, I have a couple of reasons why I'm here today. Um, one is to uh, to ask for a little bit of relief from the board. Um, I, I got a letter regarding the amusement thing. Um, and I brought a copy of this letter. I don't know who I should hand it to. I wish I could make eight copies for the board. The clerk would be um, great. But uh, this is just a letter that I sent to my landlord. And the landlord uh, at, the, at the property, the Mumaline Property Management, um, so it, it just kind of outlines some of the things I've been going through over there with them. Uh, they took over, I think, about two years ago when they bought the property from the bank. And uh, yeah, I, mean, I really didn't have any issues. Um, I saw some of the stuff that he was doing. He was cleaning up the property, uh, you know, put a coat of paint on it, and some stuff like that. Um, and he did some, some things that he told me that he eventually would correct. And, I've given it a lot of time, so I, I kind of outlined those in, in the letter for you. Hopefully, you all have a chance to read it at some point in time. But um, the major issues we've had is in, in the winter time. Uh, you know, it's an older building. It's got older HVAC units on, and uh, and uh, in the winter time, we we had two cracked heat exchangers on our HVAC units. And uh, in our lease, you know, lease, leases can have gray areas, right? So in our lease, it says that we're responsible for normal wear and tear maintenance on the HVAC units. Uh, our understanding of normal wear and tear is uh, replacing belts or, or doing uh, you know, preventive maintenance, changing filters, things of that nature. Um, just to give you a background on the units on the roof, I believe that it might be upwards of 25 plus years old. Uh, most people will not work on them. Uh, I've had two to three technicians come out, look at them, and they're like, I would condemn these units. Those are their words to me. They can't. They're so old that if you want to rebuild them, mm -hmm. it, 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 it would be like buying a new unit. I don't own units. Um, so I, I'm just I'm going by my lease. So for three months from January to through March, we pretty much had 50 degree temperatures in our business. Um, we brought in space heaters, we did everything we could. Um, <coughs> that was the safest uh, solution. He brought in a small space heater that probably heated enough for, for maybe about four people. We lost a tremendous amount of sales in those three months. We lost almost twenty-five to thirty thousand dollars in sales for a restaurant that does three hundred seventy-five thousand dollars a year in sales. That's a significant hit. Um, now we're in the uh, now we're in the hotter months. Um, I, I tried to talk to him about that, um, and he told, just tells me to keep reading my lease. Um, because the, condi the condition is the same thing. 25 plus year old units. They use a refrigerant called R22. R22 as of January 2020 uh, is not to be uh, used anymore. Because it is a United States law, I believe. Um, so not to mention the fact that if you tried to fix the units with R22, you'd be dumping hundreds, well actually about thousands of dollars into that in R22, uh, just because the cost of it and they don't make it anymore, there's no guarantee that those Um, in the meantime, uh, once again, now I, have, now I have hot temperatures to deal with, uh, which puts a strain on my business because if you walk in a place like today and it doesn't have air conditioning, you're probably going to you know, do a little 180 and walk right out. Um, so that's something that we're fighting right now. Uh, I do have some temporary fixes in place. I don't know how long they're going to last. Uh, and to be honest with you, uh, you know, those fixes are simply bypassing things that are not there for safety of the unit. Um, but I'm just doing what I can. 
uh, to get by. So we probably lost, you know, ten, fifteen thousand dollars in the summertime in sales. Uh, so I, I just want to bring this to your guys' attention, and I just want to ask for some relief in regards to the amusement devices I have in my place. I, I did pay my my business license and my liquor license and my patio license and my retail license, so those are up to date. Uh, I'm, I'm just here today for the, for the first time. I want to talk about to you. To see if I can get some relief from the from the board uh, in regards to that, because right now I'm just simply trying to keep my doors open um, as a business owner. Yeah, uh, does the clerk or your council or the administrator have any detail on what that expense is? Uh, I uh, I'm not sure I have the dollar amount. I do know that um, uh, that. He, Mr. Kenny represented that he would, uh, he asked for more time to pay when the, when the licenses were due back in May, yep. and then he's, uh, um, he's asked to be postponed to May 31st, and, and then uh, he's in, uh, in mid-June and June 18th, he, he emailed a letter, uh, or uh, the village emailed and, and sent him a letter where he was requested to, to make the payment um, uh, with the addition of a late fee as well, which is what we would always assess when someone does pay. Do we have discretion to pay for a late fee? Do you have the letter that I was going to say? I, I would recommend the board not get into the, the yeah, position of litigating the between the tenant yeah. and the yeah. board. Yeah. No, I'm not, not asking for that. Well, you are, actually. The, uh, well, there's, there's two issues. Uh, and the council's right. I'm a good enough lawyer to know I'm not a very good lawyer, but I, uh, I play one on TV sometimes. And we can't get involved in a dispute between you and your commercial landlord, but we'll be happy to take a look at the contents of your letter and if there are if there are possible uh, extensions or waivers or uh, so forth uh, relative to our licensing fees, I'm ha we're happy to at least acknowledge that. <coughs> Absolutely. You know, the, 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 my wife and I stop in once in a while uh, for sandwiches. My dad lives at Lake Thurgeon Woods. Okay. Uh, <coughs> and, you know, we, we certainly want to see you succeed. Uh, but, uh, the, the, the trick is, and, and that's why this is important, is we also have obligations to enforce the law consistently. And so Absolutely. I want to be fair. <coughs> I, uh, I'll, I'll commit to giving the letter a full and thorough and, and fair read and ask my colleagues to do the same. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. That's all, that's all I'm really asking for. The amount of issue was indicated by the letter that Mr. Kenny got on June 18th. It was uh, 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 $400 in amusement uh, machine fees, uh, amusement device fees, $100 per device, and, and then uh, $200 in, uh, in penalties since he hasn't been paid yet. No, oh, sir. And you, have you paid the principal amount of the fee yet? You I have no, no parts to pay? I have not, no. Okay. Let's uh, try and do that. And when was that fee due? Was that May 1st? Was, we extended it to May 31st? Or when was you know, we extended it's on April 30th, the end of the month, we extended it to so $50 per, per device. Yeah, the way around the $200. Yeah, I just wanted the board to know at my discretion, I gave a 30 day extension um, to May 30th, yeah, before the late fees would kick in. I, I, I'd like us all to have a chance to read the letter. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So we can to you. Yeah. So, um, uh, the other thing I wanted to ask about, I know it's about a, when I first moved there, we, we talked about uh, gaming, me and you personally, and, and uh, Trustee Burke is not here today. Um, I just, I'd, I'd been asked uh, by a, a group of the people that might be eligible in Lake Barrington if we might possibly revisit that. But I was going to ask the board if, uh, what I would have to do on my end to bring that to your, to your yeah, and Sean, when Andy and I met with you, and I appreciate the fact that you asked in a, in a polite and serious fashion your background in the restaurant business is something I appreciate. It's a brutal business. Uh, so, I, but I, 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 I 
said to you then, and I, I don't think anything has changed. The community's had this discussion, and it's not, it's not, it's not coming back up. It just isn't. And I, I'd rather have you be irritated with me than, than mislead you. No, absolutely. Uh, this, this issue has been decided, and it's been decided a couple of times by the community, and the margins are overwhelming in the, in the community's view, and I share the majority's view on this. So I, I can't give you any encouragement. I don't see any any circumstance under which we will revisit the issue. Okay. Uh, you know, I think at the time we talked about if there was something else we could do to be of assistance. Uh, you know, your competitors at Rivers Ed and at uh, Tin Man have very small outdoor facilities for smokers, which is a bigger problem in the winter because they're out there freezing. Mm -hmm. uh, I see that you make some improvements to the patio there and so forth. If there's anything we can do to help advertise or, or within our, uh, our, our our network of things and I'm certainly we're certainly open to that okay. uh, but I I would be misleading and I'm not going to do that uh, this board has made a clear decision and it's not subject to revisitation okay well I appreciate the honesty yeah thank you okay I have nothing else so all right much we will take a look at the letter and I promise you you'll get a reply okay well, thank you all so much thank you very much Agenda item eight is the consent agenda, uh, and the process here set forth in the agenda is it allows us to be more efficient in conducting the public's business by approving uh, items on an omnibus vote basis through the consent agenda. Uh, we have three items tonight, all of which we discussed in the committee of the whole meeting previously. The concert at Friar Farm, action item there is to approve a temporary use special event application for the concert on the 18th from 6 to 9 p.m. To B, financial statement audit contract and the recommended action there is to allow the administrator to execute a contract with the uh, Is it, it's Amon or Amon? Amon. Amon, thank you. In the amounts that follow, 10100 for FY20, 10350 for FY21, and 10600 for FY20. And C, IT work client first, and that's to allow the administrator to execute a contract with client first in an amount not to exceed $24,555, and further authorize the administrator to expend a contingency of up, amount of up to 10%, which is $2,455, to cover any additions or changes due to unforeseen circumstances, and of course authorize the administrator to execute the necessary corresponding documents. Are there questions on any of the issues at this time. If not, then Chair would like a motion to approve and block on an omnibus basis agenda items 8A through 8C as stated in the recommended actions of the consent agenda. May I have the motion, please? So moved. Second. By Trustee Ram Rigby, seconded by Trustee Thompson. Thank you both gentlemen. I'll ask the clerk to please call the roll. Trustee Rigby? Aye. Trustee Thompson? Yes. Trustee Perkins? Yes. Trustee Schaller? Yes. President Richardson? Yes, thank you. Agenda item nine this evening is the treasurer's report. And this is Hirsch, thank you. How's the new grandson? Fabulous. I'm going to go babysit next Monday. Put me in count. What's that? He's keeping count. Uh, it's like, yeah, it's the anyway, fourth time. No, it's fabulous. So thank you for asking. Uh, so before you, you have uh, one month. You have May 31st, 2019, our first year of our fiscal year 2020 in front of you. Uh, you'll see on our flash report on page two, total assets are equal to $2,434,000. We have current liabilities at $645,000 and equity at $1,789,000. So our assets and our current liabilities, our assets equal our current liabilities plus our equity at $2,434,000. Revenue for the first month is $194,000. Expenses at $173,000, giving us a net income of $21,000. Uh, that compares to at this point last year, the net income was $140,000. There was two large items that make up that difference. Uh, we had a distribution from the Wineke Trust, $88,000, and also real estate taxes was $50,000 higher May of last year over this year, if you recall. Uh, the state was off, it was, um, people were paying their taxes early last year. But, we get that one last year of the, of the state income tax or the state real estate tax deduction. So that um, it's just a timing difference. I'm not concerned about that in the least. 
So we'll go down to our um, below the line. We'll look at our um, what we call our regular operations and income or loss, and you'll see that um, we had five thousand one hundred ninety-one dollars of what we call extraordinary expenses. Uh, that was two driver culverts that were put in in May. Uh, so that puts our extraordinary our income from regular operations at twenty-six thousand dollars versus the 140 from last year, but differences for the same reasons I just discussed. So we'll go ahead and look at the, um, the budget to action on page 78. Um, I don't think there's much to discuss. It's really one month of our fiscal year. Uh, you'll see on page seven, we have our revenue through six months, but um, actual the budget. Uh, and then on page eight, our expenses are at 5% actual the budget. Once again, it's just one month. Um, Unless there are specific questions, I don't think there's anything that we really need to point out this month. Okay, we can turn to page nine to take a quick look at the motor fuel tax fund. Um, we have current assets in there of $258,000. Uh, we're not planning to use this fund this year, so it'll continue to grow about $10,000 a month. Uh, the new tax that was imposed uh, July 1st uh, will start to see an increase in September, October. And I am also projecting about a 50% increase in our fuel tax. Um, so an extra $5,000 a month, which will add up nicely over the year. So we're all paying for it. So I'm sure we're all noticing at the pump to buy your gas. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so on page 12, we'll uh, look at the uh, water sewer fund. Not much to mention there. We have net present current assets of $1,486,000. Uh, capital plans this year call for a planned expenditure of $180,000. Obviously, we have more than enough funds to cover uh, those amounts. So um, that's really good for the financial statements for the month. Um, and I can, I'll talk about the warrants. Um, any questions beforehand on the financial statements? Okay, looking at warrant A, we actually have a number of unusual requests this month. Uh, warrant A applied ecological services for $3,587, and that's for us related work. Um, Clark Mosquito, it's only unusual because it's the first of four payments, it's $6,250. We pay them $25,000 throughout budget. HR Green has two invoices, $9,500 and $5,305. As engineering services for the Anderson Road project that's um, begin soon. Um, it's that's done. Oh, excuse it's me. Done. That's done. <laughs> <laughs> I knew as I was saying those words, I'm like, okay. Um, and that was, that's raising impact fees, so that's coming from the general fund this year. To that was the, I just want to clarify, the 9500 was the engineering design. Um, in the 5305 that we paid them, that's for about uh, a little over half of the construction supervision. But the project's been done, they're just okay. okay. Thank you. Uh, continuing here, Minute Man Press for $1,830, that's for the recent newsletter that went out. Uh, municipal CMS. $3,196, that's our annual website hosting. Uh, Kathy and Scott for $4,500, that was the focus group study that we discussed last month. Uh, $56,811 to Speedway, and that's the rebate of half of their calendar year 2019, 2018, excuse me, sales tax. And then additionally, one last thing to mention, between Warren A and B, there are $55,000 $615 a buy refund request. It was a big push this month to start um, cleaning up some of those pad for the for the projects that have finished cleaning up those product bills. Bond money um, has been sitting here in the village. So I think 11 bond, bonds are being uh, refunded this month. Uh, that's all I have. Any questions? First month is always easy. <laughs> It's like the first weekend in college in the fall semester. No one goes to that. I learned that from my friend who went to the University of Georgia. <laughs> Are there questions for, um, for the treasurer? <coughs> okay. Uh, and Chair would like a motion to approve the block. And, and thank you, Mrs. Merchant. The uh, agenda items A, A through C, approved financial statements as of May 31. B, pay bills in the amount of $326,319.42, as listed on the accounts payable warrant A dated July 9, 2019, and C, pay bills in the amount of $22,456.43, 
as listed on the accounts payable warrant B dated July 9, 2019. And Lisa, thank you for writing this in large font for me. Uh, Chair would like a motion to approve the plot, please. So moved. By Trustee Thompson, may I please have a second? By Trustee Schaller, thank you both, gentlemen. Clerk, please call the vote. Trustee Thompson? Yes. Trustee Schaller? Yes. Trustee Perkins? Yes. Trustee Rigby? Aye. President Richardson? Yes. Agenda item 10 is the administrator's report. Sure. Um, I wanted to let you know that Walt Hamilton has started working on updating our GIS. Um, as you may recall, we talked about that during the budget meetings. Um, this is uh, an update to the business park utility mapping is basically what it is for water and sanitary sewer. Um, and this will help with um, not only us knowing where things are, um, but it'll also help with um, the ISO insurance and, uh, ratings and keeping those favorable. Um, Tim and Tony from Fox River Grove have been working on updating our current paper map, which is about the size of a twin bed sheet, <laughs> and getting that uh, a little bit more in succinct and with foul and fire hydrant locations. Um, <coughs> secondly, uh, Lake County Stormwater Management uh, Commission, they are having a rainfall data presentation at the, um, the Village of Barrington uh, in a couple of weeks, and the Flint Creek Spring Creek Watershed Partnership will be attending as well as myself. Um, the public is invited, but as I previously reported here, the um, uh, state's geological services has recommended increasing the <coughs> rainfall data used when you calculate how large a stormwater management basin needs to be. And um, so I think most people think this is long overdue, um, but it'll take some time to implement it and get it going. Uh, Cuba Township had a busy month. Uh, they provided our residents with additional services at no extra cost. Um, this mainly included trimming, trimming a lot of trees in our parkways, um, especially after the June 30th and July 2nd storms. Uh, people can still put their uh, branches and twigs that are eight inches in diameter or less out at the roadside, and they will come by and uh, mulch those up and take that away. But please call Cuba Township and give them your address just to make sure they don't miss it. Um, also, they've um, done some filling potholes for me and um, uh, uh, some, they dropped off mulch for the community garden, which is much appreciated. Uh, BAPOC and our communities, our communities are members of the Northwest Water Planning Alliance, and that's a five county uh, COG organization, and they are working on groundwater um, management. And the committee is about to issue a best management practices manual for sensible salting. We've talked about salt use in our town before. Um, all of Cuba Township's um, people that work on the uh, snow plowing trucks and spread salt have been to the uh, Lake County uh, facility for a day of, of training. I attended that last year with them and um, learning about sensible salting. This is gonna move forward um, to present some things to businesses uh, that have large parking lots, you know, for example, the hospitals, stores, apartment complexes, and getting the word out to them, because many of them still um, pay their contractor by how much salt they use, <laughs> rather than <laughs> a sensible salting. So it, it becomes the contractor to use lots of salt. So stay tuned for more information on that. Um, and last but not least, uh, we received a check for $7,000 uh, last week for the Open Lands Comet Green Region Grant. This money will be used for the healthy heritage to replace Buckthorn along Old Barrington Road. And a meeting is scheduled for next week with our partners, which are Citizens for Conservation, the Flint Creek Spring, Spring Creek Watershed Partnership, and uh, the Park District to so work on the plans for that. So that's it. Any questions on that? Questions. If not, then we can move to agenda item 11, which is the clerk's report. You should have all received our summer newsletter in your mailboxes by now, and we would like to thank Max Strategies, specifically uh, Julie Larson of Max Strategies, for her help with the new layout and the look to the newsletter. I hope everyone likes it. My wife noticed it and yeah, complimented it. Uh, she thought it was a much sharper, uh, better, better look. Yes, we like it. Um, and then just uh, save the day for the barn stamp. It's a little bit earlier this year, September 28th. So I hope you all can come. We will have better weather in September. And then one other thing, there's a private well class webinar coming up. 
that is called Septic Systems 101. That is July 17th from 1 to 2.30 p.m. You can register for the webinar to learn about septic system management. And that is on privatewellclass.org where you can go to the village website or find it on their Facebook page or just click on the link to register. Thank you. Some questions for the clerk? <coughs> Thank you. Well, agenda item 12 is reports of the standing committee. Uh, I don't have anything really under A for branding and communications other than my wife's comment about the newsletter looking really sharp. <laughs> and I'll skip to my, my D, which is external relations. Uh, the administrator is to be commended for what has been exceptional leadership in, in our region. IDOT is proposing a complete shutdown of Route 22 starting next week for repairs to, flip, to be, to be, um, Thank you to the culvert uh, go, uh, attendant to Flint Creek underneath. It presents a tremendous threat to Good Shepherd. Uh, we have been actively involved with our representatives at Fidelity. We were on a call with the head of government affairs or advocate at their corporate headquarters in Cummins Grove. Uh, we've got a variety of uh, contacts going in on this to very high levels in Springfield. Uh, since we don't believe really evidence that this is kind of the top of gravity. This is kind of just a, uh, an administrative attitude that we hope we can reverse the long term. Uh, it, it reminds me of uh, oftentimes folks in, in Fidelity's line of work, and this, you all know that's what I do for a living, will earn 18 months worth of pay in, in two weeks uh, because they've really, they've really jumped on this with both people. Karen should be singled out for special praise. Every fire chief in the region has, has lauded her proactive uh, activity on this, and she's been she's been bringing the alarm on this issue. Uh, to it's, it's brought us even closer to the Shepherd, although we've always had a, a very good relationship with them. And I want to commend her for that because uh, it's never an easy asked to reverse these things, but we at least have the ability of a lot of work having been done because she's the one who organized it, including a meeting here uh, with the IDOT officials, the <coughs> officials, those from the chair. Uh, I, I think Jim and I as lawyers will tell you anybody who promises a client a guaranteed outcome of litigation or legislation is misleading themselves, but I think we're doing everything we can. And there are a few tricks left that haven't yet been Decided, but we've got a very forceful plan, and, and I remain cautiously optimistic that we can get uh, policy level folks in Springfield and the agency and the governor's office to understand the concerns because it's up to a 17 minute additional delay, which for a stroke patient or a heart attack patient could be different. I haven't, I haven't met the folks involved at IDOT, so I don't want to make, I, I won't, I won't uh, allow myself of speculating, but the fire chiefs have been the U.S. State Department phrase that there was a full and frank exchange of views. <laughs> and uh, we're hoping that policy level folks will appreciate those concerns. So anything you'd like to add on that? No, other than the 17 minutes came from IDOT, and when I was taking a look at that detour, and just, I think it's about 10 miles, the detour, so you have to come down to 59, to about and you just think about how bad 14 is now during rush hour and then you have all the detour traffic that way that I'm thinking it, it's going to be even possibly worse than what they're projecting um, so it's just very scary very scary I know this is talking about shutting it off on blue yes, yes. That's, and that's why the alarm is so so, so scary from, from, from what point to what point they evaluated the one lane option and it came back um, I think it was last week and said no, nope, we can't do that because it's not wide enough, it's not safe enough, the drop off is too steep, it's not wide enough, so we're going to go for full closure. What when are they proposed to start it in and where? July 15th. Next yes, one. Where, what, are the, what are the... The closure would be east of Harbor and west of Old Barrington Road. So anybody coming from the east to get to Good Shepherd would need to take the detour. Okay, no. 
Yeah, you know, the, the the notion that if there's not enough road is simply a cost thing. Yeah. yeah. You know, all they would have to do is is it fix it, tear it up, and then yeah. do it again. Yeah. Uh, so we're we've got a pretty forceful. I'm I'm satisfied that at least. The initial plan is correct. It may require adjustment, and uh, I'll, we'll certainly keep you all uh, up to date on it. If you get concerns from residents, please direct them to me, mm -hmm. and, because Karen and I are really living this right now with each other. We have another call scheduled for tomorrow with uh, with Kuchel. So, and how long do they expect? They expect the current. Um, the, their compromise was to do a full closure. Um, and pay the contractor to work 12-hour days rather than 8-hour days. Um, so they would expect it to be about four weeks then. Oh, and anybody who knows what the traffic styles have been from 59 to 12 with the, with the sister project oh, yeah. knows what a... What, what one 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 is. Yeah. Yeah. A, a, there's, there's no good uh, other than having one lane remain open which is what they've done east of yeah, yeah. Uh, 59. It's the only way to really assure public safety. And so far, you know, we can't, I can't speak because I didn't attend, but the, the chiefs have been pretty aggressive in their, in, their, in their meeting rhetoric with this because, you know, it's not trivial or trying to say you know, human lives can legitimately be lost here. Uh, so though that's report uh, 12D, so we can go on the lighter side of the news uh, Trustee Thompson, Community Relations, Special Events, and Veterans Affairs. I think we've covered a lot of that, but anything you'd like to add? <coughs> yes, we have things, Mr. President. Well, first of all, I'll start with the veterans of Lake Barrington Shores. They're having their annual Support Our Troops program uh, beginning in August. They collect necessity items for troops deployed in harm's way. And we'll have a, a full report in the August meeting on that. So be prepared to collect. And uh, regarding the the, uh, uh, the July 18th concert, I just wanted to really say a couple things. Number one, I want to uh, really emphasize our thanks to um, to Sinorama for doing those signs for us, uh, no charge, for Angel Soft Water, be providing the water for us, for Clark for the mosquito abatement spray, and for Waste Manager for their ADA accessible porta potty. And, uh, and also tell you that the marketing has included LBS's uh, Shoreline's newsletter, the Burrington Area Chamber of Commerce emails for members, all Bay Hive members uh, received the information for distribution uh, to their residents, and uh, next door Barrington URL has it, it's on there right now if you want to look at it, and also a press release by Ryan McLaughlin of strategies uh, for what they've done. And that's my report. Thank you. Uh, questions for Jim? Uh, 12 C Economic Development. Kathleen kind of gave you Andy's report earlier, so I'll just refer trustees to Kathleen's report in terms of what Andy uh, would otherwise mention, and he'll be back next month. So. Uh, 12 F Finance, HR, and Administration. Trustee Rigby. Uh, thank you. Uh, no report in the first month of the years. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, 12 F, open spaces and village facilities. The trustee Mitchell is in Maine, but uh, Karen, is there anything to report on his behalf? Um, excuse me, I would just say that we've been working on the cameras uh, installation at, um, they're completed at the uh, water plant. Uh, we're waiting for internet service so that they can be active someplace else, you know, so that we can look at them on our phone. Um, and also, they've started the camera project here at Village Hall. Um, quite timely, Lisa had a call today that there was somebody playing tennis last night and their car got hit by somebody who pulled in the parking lot and backed into their car. Um, I went to the our old cameras, that we, the cameras we have right now, and all you can see is the white car blob. I mean, you can't really distinguish any kind of license plate or anything like that. So I called the um, gentleman back and just let them know that we didn't have any detailed information other than, yeah, it was a white Prius that hit you. But, and he said it didn't damage the car, it just damaged his bike rack on the car. But still, um, we hope that the new cameras that we'll have, um, one will be a license plate reader, um, a quality camera, and the others will be um, 
strategically placed around the outside and inside of Village Hall. Questions for uh, the administrator on, on Trustee Mitchell's report. The other piece, of course, we covered earlier, which was the agreement with Lake County Forest Preserve concerning the trails. Uh, 12G, Public Safety and Gated Communities, Trustee Sheldon, thanks for putting together the briefing. Um, well, thank you for the the Sheriff's Department for uh, putting our active shooter presentation together and uh, seeing where that goes and whether that could be expanded or involve each of ways from the area. But uh, good uh, initial awareness of, of what to do. Um, interesting that Carol and I both get the uh, Sheriff's Office monthly reports, crime related. But if you think, you know, Robin doesn't do anything when she's down here, just sits in the back of her meeting and enjoys <coughs> life in southwestern Lake County. In the month of May, there were 12 alarms, not banks, two battery reports, two death investigations, four domestic in progress, four financial crimes, one hazardous situation, three neighbor problems, one solicitor complaint, one stalking complaint, two suicide attempts, theft of a vehicle, and theft of a court at all. So uh, we more recently had another couple of suicide attempts that have taken place. So you think we're in a bubble down here at Lake, Lake Barrington, uh, it's not true. Did you want to add anything, Robin, to uh, our reports, or are you, things are under control? Yeah, we're all just in the reports. You said that suicide's been bad on Thursday, March 4th, Robin, at half by 7 a.m., but you can do that or anything else. Well, we thank you again, Sheriff's Department, for what they do, as they said, we've done a fair amount of activity down here. That's our police department. So we use them as was pointed out <coughs> in the active shooter thing. They can be here in four or five minutes, and not only in four or five minutes, but they can have just about the entire department if needed at the back door. So very fortunate that way. Uh, during the countryside fire protection district, uh, they have re elected all their officers. Keith Hansen is president, Thomas Long, Dr. Long is vice president, Matthew Howard is treasurer, um, Marvin Hill is secretary, and our former trustee, <coughs> Paul Stark, is a, uh, still a trustee with the Brandon Countryside Fire Protection District, and as Karen has pointed out, Brandon Countryside has been very vocal in their opposition to what's going on tonight, and yeah, that, that comes up frequently in their meetings. Uh, Wakanda Fire District didn't have a meeting in uh, last month. As far as gated communities, tall grass is now 10 new homes. Two are available immediately, one under construction, seven rents to build, priced from $569.9 to $741.9, ranging in size from 3200 to 4500 square feet. So uh, most of our blue Esther lane, so the report too that we can back some money for those folks that have been completed. So yep. we're uh, eager for them to continue. RBS, <coughs> lots of activities, but only 43 MLS closings to date. There were 64 last year as of this time of the year. So sales and RBS are down. But the average sale price is up almost 10%. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. <laughs> Uh, and the veterans put on all the flags. About 650 new flags. Yes, brand new flags. Brand new flags. Very impressive. And larger than the old ones. That's it. Right, questions for Trustee Shaw? Okay. Uh, 12 age of roads and infrastructure. Trustee Perkins. Thank you. Um, I'm going to turn this over to Karen, but first I just wanted to say I um, recently IML seminar for uh, newly elected officials and learned all the ins and outs and do's and don'ts. So, uh, you know, I, I just got a lot of a lot of great information from that, and uh, hopefully, I'll make all the right decisions. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to let Karen um, talk about the roads. Yeah, we we already talked about Route 22, which is probably the major. Um, Anderson Road is completed, so the contractor got in and got out in like a couple of weeks, which was phenomenal. Um, so we're just finishing up all the paperwork on that. Um, 
be taking a look at a, a, a minor crack seal and patching program for later on this summer for maintenance of some of our streets that need a little TLC. Um, you know, that we will not be paving in the next couple of years to help them last longer. So, with whatever money I can find. <laughs> <laughs> Are there um, other questions for Trustee Perkins or the administrator? You guys, if you look at these next things, there's no old business, no ordinances, no resolution, no new business. So we can go to a second opportunity for the public to address the board before. No one seeks it. There's no closed session. So what's our favorite motion? Motion to adjourn. Moved by Shell, seconded by Rigby. All those in favor? Opposed?